In open channel hydraulics, weirs are commonly used to either regulate or measure the volumetric flow rates. They are a particular use in large scale situations such as irrigation schemes, canals, and rivers. For small scale applications, weirs are often referred to as notches and invariably are sharp edged and manufactured from thin plate material. The flow pattern over a notch or weir is complex and there is no analytical solution to the relationship between discharge and head so that a semi-empirical approach has to be used. The objectives of this lab are to determine the characteristics of open channel flow over a rectangular and a triangular notch weirs and to determine the values of discharge coefficient for both notches. The weir flow apparatus has several elements, including a stealing baffle, an inlet nozzle combined to promote smooth flow conditions in the channel, a veneer hook, and point gauge, all mounted on an instrument carrier. These instruments measure the depth of flow above the base of the notch. The weir notches are mounted in a carrier at the outlet end of the flow channel. To connect the delivery nozzle, the quick release connector is unscrewed from the bed of the channel and the nozzle screwed into place. The stilling baffle slides into the slots in the wall of the channel. These slots are polarized to ensure correct orientation of the baffle. The instrument carrier is located on the side channels of the molded top. The carrier may be moved along the channel to the required measurement position. The gauge is provided with a coarse adjustment locking screw and a fine adjustment nut. The vernier is located to the mast by the screw and is used in conjunction with the scale. The lock and point are clamped to the base of the mast by means of thumb screw. Mount the V-notch weir plate into the flow channel. Turn on the pump and slightly adjust the flow control to fill the channel upstream of the weir with water. Turn off the pump when the water starts to flow over the weir. Wait 5 minutes to allow the water to settle. In order to measure the datum height with the height gauge of the base of the notch, H knot, put the instrument carrier in this position. Then carefully lower the gauge until the point is just above the notch base and lock the coarse adjustment screw. Then, using the fine adjustment, adjust the gauge until the point just touches the notch bottom and take a reading. Be careful not to damage the gauge. The surface of the water as it approaches the weir will fall. This is particularly noticeable at high rates of discharge caused by high heads. To obtain an accurate measure of the undisturbed water level above the crest of the weir, it is necessary to place the head measuring gauge of a distance of at least three times the head. Adjust the point gauge to read 5 millimeters greater than the previous reading. Record the reading as H. Turn on the pump and slightly adjust the flow control until the water level coincides with the point gauge. Check that the level has stabilized before taking readings. Measure the flow rate using the volumetric tank. Observe the shape of the nap and take a picture of it. Increase the flow by opening the bench regulating valve to set up heads above the datum level and steps of 5 mm until the bench regulating valve is fully open. At each condition, measure the flow rate and observe the shape of the nap. To obtain a sufficiently accurate result, collect around 25 liters of water each time or collect the water for at least 120 seconds. After the last measurement, close the regulating valve, stop the pump, and then replace the weir with the next weir to be tested. Repeat the procedure steps using the rectangular notch plate but increase the point gauge by 10 mm increments instead of 5 mm. Be sure to clean up your station and any water that may have spilled. Following the lab manual, 
complete the results table, and put together your lab report. If you have any questions, consult your teaching assistant or professor.